Hey everybody, it's Jane from Norman S. Wright. We're going to stay on the topic of humidity control, and to control humidity, you need to be able to measure it. So let's answer the question, how do we measure humidity? Let's get started. There are several methods to measure humidity. A couple videos ago, I talked about the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. One of the most common ways to measure humidity is to compare the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures. In that video, I mentioned the sling psychrometer. So let's start there. A sling psychrometer has a standard thermometer and a thermometer with a wetted wick in it. It has a handle that you hold and you twirl it around, which is why it's called a sling psychrometer. As the water evaporates from the wetted wick, it cools that thermometer, giving you the wet bulb temperature, and the other thermometer tells you the dry bulb temperature. If you know the wet and dry bulb temperatures, you can use a psychrometric chart to determine the humidity. So let's move this up and look at a psychrometric chart. So let's say we have 75 degree dry bulb temperature and 65 degree wet bulb temperature. We can see that puts us just under 60% relative humidity. Let's call it 59%. And then if you go over to this side, you can see it's between 70 and 80 grains per pound, so about 76 grains per pound. So let's make some room. The dry bulb and wet bulb thermometer setup is used in many different types of psychrometers. For instance, in other psychrometers, instead of having someone manually twirl it, you have the dry bulb and wet bulb thermometers in ductwork where the fan or blower would blow air over the two thermometers. Psychrometers use evaporative cooling to determine the humidity. So conditions that might affect evaporative cooling can affect the accuracy of the reading. For instance, the purity of the water, the condition of the wick, the ventilation rate, and radiation, such as direct sunlight, can affect the reading. Psychrometers have an accuracy of about plus or minus 3 to 7% relative humidity. So let's make some room. Another way to measure humidity is with a mechanical hygrometer. Mechanical hygrometers use organic materials that change in dimension with changes in humidity. Commonly used organic materials are human hair, nylon, animal horn, wood, and paper. And they would work like this. You would have organic material here, and it's connected to a series of arms that move a gauge on this relative humidity scale. So let's say this is human hair. As it expands or contracts, it would move the gauge and tell you the relative humidity. They tend to be nonlinear and are considered unreliable under 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but they're simple devices and they can be read directly. Depending on the organic material, they can be accurate up to plus or minus 5 to 7 percent relative humidity. Let's make room again. There are also electrical hygrometers. There are two main types, capacitive and resistive. Capacitive sensors use a polymer layer that soaks up moisture from the air. As humidity changes, the capacitance of that layer changes. The system reads that change and translates it into relative humidity. It works like this. The sensor consists of an aluminum strip that is anodized by a process that forms a porous oxide layer. Then the structure is coated with a thin layer of gold. As water enters the sensor, the dielectric constant of the aluminum oxide layer changes, which alters its capacitance. An aluminum oxide capacitive sensor is an example of a capacitive sensor. Let's make some room again. Resistive sensors work with special materials whose electrical resistance changes when they absorb moisture. So it works something like this. You would have two electrodes with a resistive material in between them. As the humidity goes up, it absorbs more water and that changes the resistance of the material and that tells you that the humidity has changed. One thing to note is that except for the mechanical hygrometer, the sensors I've described do not show the actual humidity. Similar to how an airflow sensor measures pressure, which is then converted into airflow, you have to calculate humidity from their outputs. Let me make a little bit more room. So on HVAC equipment, you'll see devices like humidity transmitters and dew point transmitters, which have outputs that are capacitance or resistance, and they're connected to a controller with some logic that takes this output and converts it into the relative humidity. So let's bring all of that back on now. That covers the different ways humidity can be measured. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.